Hey everyone, DocStorm here again. So I hope you'd enjoy the video so far that I've uploaded. Uh, today I'm going to show you another replay facing a very popular air deck composition, the Balloon and Giant. Now the Giant typically takes out your defensive structure and acts as a tank to tank all the damage you throw at it, while the Balloon can attack your towers unhindered. So what I want you to focus on this video especially is my dragon placements, okay guys? I play him as a body blocker, like in any contact sports, so either the dragon acts as a redirection to get the balloon to go to a direction I want him to, or I block it just to slow the balloon down a little bit. Because guys, one of the main issues about the balloon is its slow speed, okay? So you really want to use that to your advantage, okay? So now let's uh, get right into the video. So here, um, you're going to see that Orlando, my opponent here, places a Elixir Collector. Why I waited to play the Elixir Collector again, I'd use it like a bank. I want to force my opponents to attack and engage first. So why should I throw the Elixir Collector too early when uh, I want to wait to see what they throw at me first? So now he places a defensive structure, I place my Valkyrie. Why that's a good choice is because she's slow, okay? So again, you don't send forces right up ahead, you get more time to react and see what your opponent does. So here now I might as well throw in my Hog. I throw him at the back again because I he, my opponent still isn't doing much. Now, right away he sends the Giant. I'm going to pause it here. Now, the cannon placement is very important here because... For the balloon to be attracted to the cannon instead of my tower, it has to be all the way up there. And as you can see, my baby dragon placement, he's flapping his wings there, I place him right in front of the balloon. Because what that acts as is a body block. So the balloon actually has to deviate a little bit around my dragon, wasting a little bit of additional time until the balloon can reach my cannon. Now the goblin drops is just to increase... Uh, the attack and take down the giant at the same time. So now I'm going to play it again. So again, zap it just to slow both units down a little bit, buys me time. And again, why it's important to place my elixir collector in the middle is because of that reason. Now, the elixir collector, if you place it next to your tower, one, if someone has a rocket, it can damage both your tower and the elixir collector, and that's not good. Secondly, as you can see here, the balloon will get attracted to the middle and go straight down to my elixir collector instead of my tower. Again, that buys me additional time. So usually after an attack by my opponent, I always throw in a little bit of a counterattack. That way it helps me recycle my cards too, so I can again play my elixir collector and wait in the beginning of these games. And again, his wizard is coming my way. And you've noticed that I'm not going to be playing anything to defend it. Guys, sometimes if you know they're not going to do too much damage to your tower, it's actually better to just save some elixir for yourself. Okay, so that's exactly what I did here. So now we're just resetting a little bit. So I'm preparing to for another aerial giant attack. Okay, now focus on again my dragon placement later on. Okay, I'm going to show you how to redirect the balloon. So here... I'm going to place my cannon, but as you see, the balloon didn't immediately go to my cannon. So what I did was I placed my dragon a little bit in front of it again, so it redirected him up a little bit so that it got attracted to my cannon. So again, guys, your dragon placement or your air placement here is very important. It acts as a body blocker and a damage unit to the air unit you want. So again, after a full attack, I have troops left over, so I always go for a counterattack. Why here I went a little bit aggressive is because I knew my opponent was probably more starved of elixir than I was. So that's why I'm pushing. And with an all-out push like this, my opponent is forced to defend. I knew he wouldn't be able to, again, drop that giant, drop that air balloon. Because or else I would have taken the tower for sure. So, and again, sometimes when you add pressure to your opponent, it makes them play things wrong. So here he effectively wasted some elixir on that, um, on that Tesla because... You know what? The Tesla's not doing anything. Another air attack, okay? So place the cannon in the front. Now the balloon's heading that way. So already again, I place that dragon right in front of the balloon. So it forces him to waste some time to travel around my dragon. 
So again, that balloon, no problem. It goes right down to the middle and to my main tower, which is no problem. Now here, the fireball placement. I waited a little bit there because I want to make sure all the troops clumped up together so my fireball can do the most damage it can. So here we're resetting, but as you can see, I'm ahead. So I'm going to play a little bit on the aggressive side. So I put down my hog, put down my goblins. But at this point, I knew that it's going to be tough for me to get there. So I switched my strategy. I'm like, I need a fireball. I knew it was going to do 190 damage. And then I had a zap spell. And that just ends the game right there, guys. So a close game overall. Um, you just have to feel out what your opponent's playing. Uh, play your characters properly. Uh, save that dragon for the balloon attack because that literally is my only air defense, guys. And as well, play your buildings strategically so you can kind of guide the um, opponent's offense to the areas that you want to effectively take them down. So again, guys, I hope you liked this video and uh, that you've learned a few things against these air decks. So let me recap some strategies here. The most important is your placements of your and your defensive units. Sometimes you need it to act as a body blocker. So even for troops like hog riders when they rush you, where you place your barbarians, your goblins, or any defensive structure is very important. If you place them directly in front, it forces the hog rider to kind of get stuck in, in your troops, move around, waste some time before it can actually engage your tower. And sometimes that's a matter of one hit or no hits, and that could be a win or a loss. So guys, placement is very important. And with air decks, there's a little bit more of a trick. You gotta make sure that um, uh, you either either block them to slow them down or you actually have to redirect them sometimes. Air units are tricky because as you can see, I know sometimes if you guys play like free spells, sometimes you think you would freeze the balloon, but you actually did not. Because the animation of air units is not actually where you wanna target the spells. It's actually better to look at the shadows of the air units. So guys, next time if you're freezing them, if you're zapping them, if you're playing defensive structures to lure the targets towards it, make sure you're looking at the shadow and not so much the big animation itself. It's actually quite deceiving and I've seen a lot of people lose because of that issue. So guys, be careful. And again, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos that I'm gonna be posting, teaching you everybody and showing you how to beat certain decks, okay? So I hope you like this. And if you did, please guys subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. And thanks a lot for watching.